So hey everyone, I'm Marta. And I'm Misha. And we're the co-founders of Claire. Claire is a chatbot for testing consumer products. So we help brands and retailers identify their best sellers and their worst performers before they commit to any production decisions. Yeah, so we're already fortunate enough to be working with some of the largest retailers in the country. Um, some of our first customers are Kohl's and Target. And we're working with fashion leaders like Rebecca Minkoff, Ralph Lauren, and Rent the Runway. And we're solving a huge problem for them. That problem is that more than 50% of new products fail. So of the $24 trillion retail industry, $1.1 trillion are being left on the table every single year due to poor product decisions. Um, and that's not really the case in software, right? Software doesn't have this problem because software ships instantly. And software companies have developed whole methodologies like Lean, Agile, Scrum to ship and iterate product fast. But for testing physical products, enterprises rely on 100-year-old technologies, pretty much just surveys and focus groups. And like these methods are just not accurate. So it's no wonder that most new physical products that hit market fail. And that's exactly why we created Claire. You can think of Claire as a giant focus group over chat that's actually scalable and accurate. So here's how it works. Users come to our chat on Facebook Messenger and provide their feedback on new products. We take that information pass it through our proprietary data models, and tell our brand partners how their products will perform. Our chatbot is also entirely built on Heroku. So let's take a look at a live example. Let's say that we're working with a brand called Scully, which makes awesome Western shirts. Scully sends Misha an email with a link, which drops him directly into the chat. All he has to do is just press get started to, to begin. So I press get started and Claire sends the first message. So saddle up and tell us which cowboy shirts you like best. How about it? Yeehaw. Of course, I'll press that. Am I allowed to invest already? Sorry. Just... <laughs> um, all right, partner, would you buy this shirt? And so then I can take a closer look at the model and just see if this shirt resonates with me. And I think in this case, I'm going to say, yes, sir. Yeah, I'm going to take it. Um, so I can say, you know, whether it's a style, color, or price, or I can have a conversation with Claire, which a lot of people do. And in this case, you know, it just looks good on the model, so I'll just tell her that. Looks good oh, on model. Perfect. It does. really does. Cool. Thanks for letting us know. Congrats. You won your first point. Do a little dance. So we keep customers engaged and reward them for their feedback by rewarding them with points and relevant gifts. So you can see why our completion rates are literally 10 times higher than surveys. We're also five times more accurate than traditional market research um, at predicting product performance because we pair our chats with data models on the back end. And the market we're going after is quite big when you think about the sheer number of physical products released each year. So there are 400 million products that go into market and over half of them fail. We charge from $100 to $250 per product, so you're looking at a total addressable market of $20 billion. And we'll win because we are product development and data science experts. Before this, Marta worked at Mondelez, a giant snack company, where she created the department that led new product introductions for brands like Oreo, Trident, Cadbury, across 165 countries. And Misha is the data expert. He was the top physics PhD student at the University of Chicago and consulted for companies like Microsoft on the futures of enterprise data. So if you want to join our mission of making physical products as easy to test as software, come say hi to Claire. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Right on. <laughs> well, that, was, that, that was a great pitch, by the way. Thank, Thank you for that. Um, I, I wanted to actually talk about uh, kind of you, talk, you touched on uh, the 50% addressable market, you know, and you said this is like the market opportunity. How much of that is do you think addressable to you specifically in your company? Yeah. Um, so basically, like that was for all physical products. We're currently at attacking apparel and home. That's kind of the place where we've done work. And that's about a quarter of that. So that's a $5 billion market. And uh, how many users do you think you need to actually kind of acquire to get to, let's say, profitability? How many users, yeah. how many customers, and also maybe you can talk yeah. about you know, the scale in terms of your so overall attraction? We're already profitable, um, ramen profitable. Um, uh -huh. So we lived on Marta's parents' futon for six months. Um, <laughs> but 
basically in order to, so we're hiring now and we'd be profitable within six months to a year. Basically we were looking to hit 100K um, MRR within a year and that would bring us to, well, I mean, will we be profitable? And to answer your question directly, the beautiful thing is we don't actually have to acquire our consumers. So we go with the B2B enterprise model. So we actually use the user bases of a brand or retailer. So they send their customers to our platform. So we don't actually have to acquire the end users. Yeah, good point. Hey, Will, would you sell stuff through this? No, that's what I was going to ask. What, what do you do about like trolls and bombers that could like totally rip apart a product just because they're hating? Yeah, so the way our data models work is that we find which users are quality and predictive essentially because some people are just going to be saying like Tinder swiping on this thing and just saying yes to everything. And you can write data models that filter out for them. <laughs> um, so, and that's kind of where my background in data science comes in. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. They teach hater proofing in physics classes <laughs> now? Well, they teach you how to like find really distant signals in faraway galaxies. Um, which is kind of similar to finding like what does that have to do with users. Tinder again? Sorry, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, you just have to find the users that are actually quality and listen to them. And that's what our competitive advantage is that we know how to do that. How much of the back end is algo driven, driven versus logic driven? Um, it's a, so it's a neural nets, machine learning. So it's totally algo driven. 100%, so 100%. Yeah. As opposed to, so you can just grow as your data set grows exactly. and your user yeah. base grows. Exactly. You don't have to sit there and program if this, then that. There's no logic. Exactly. And it learns which you And how do you deal with responses from consumers, not just for the haters, but that don't make sense? So do you just parse and use NLP and just decide on your own if it's a valid response yeah. and discard everything else, or what do you do? So NLP is, I think, a little too early right now to really solve a lot of problems. So. We mostly use a button interface, and we kind of guide interface? use a button interface, and we oh, use so you just type. Give preset choices. So, but that's what I'm saying. So, how do you so for each product? Then you have a process where you define all the options as you think they should be. So you don't yeah. learn the options as they come based off the responses you predefine them. Yeah. That's the future, but currently we send them down paths depending. Yeah, that on explains what they do. it. Okay. Yeah. We have a company called Reply Yes that you reply yes to buy something, but it actually knows if you say. Hells yes or F yeah, it's kind of, computers are smart like that. So you said you're profitable, then why do you need the 150,000? Um, I didn't hear you, excuse me. I, I said, you, you mentioned that you're profitable, so why do you need this money? And you know, what are the use of proceeds? How are you gonna spend the money? Yeah, so um, we're profitable in the sense that it's just the two of us um, and we make enough money to, to live. Um, <laughs> and, but our biggest problem right now is actually account managing. These are big customers and you need to spend time with them. So I, I do product, Marta does sales, but we actually do account managing. So we need to hire an account manager, which we actually already have. How have you gotten the sales that you've gotten to this point through your for previous employers or previous connections? Um, so it's been a mix of cold emails, warm introductions. And how do you price it? Know. Um, so we price on a per product basis from 100 to $250 per product test. Oh, man. Ooh. Right, right. <laughs> Woo! Nice job! Bravo. Good job, you guys. Good job. Good job. Bravo, bravo. Very, very good. All right. Let's keep the momentum going. I like that move, Chris Saka. They're $20 ahead oh. already. Sorry? They're $20 ahead already. Yeah, I saw that. I'm amused. That might be 